A lot of people are really getting angry with all these new wind farms the Albanese government's now wanting even more of, you know, the damage to our landscape. So the government says, well, look, it wants more wind farms now built offshore instead, like off the coast of the Hunter region, where you actually get whales. But Energy Minister Chris Bowen asked, we said, oh, don't worry about them. And whales and fishing coexist in various ways around the world with offshore winds. You know, some people think whales can't exist with offshore wind. Well, whales exist now with cargo ships and with oil rigs and with gas rigs and with offshore wind around the world. But is that true? Because last weekend, another dead whale was found on America's eastern coast. That's the 60th since December 1. And a new documentary this week called Thrown to the Wind points blame at the many, many new offshore wind farms off that coast. I saw another whale had washed up. It's becoming a pattern. Is it the windmills? Is it the pounding of the seafloor? How many whales is it going to take? There aren't many places where the North Atlantic right whale can go. It's dust into extinction. It sounds like they're like going to pile drive. <laughs> What the United States is looking at is thousands of wind turbines in an area that our whales, our dolphins, our marine life, where they live, where they migrate, where they breed. It's only when they started going into the wind lease areas that we believe that the whales are dying. So those red dots are whale deaths. Precisely. What a scandal. Joining me is the producer of that film, author, journalist and founder of Environmental Progress, Michael Schellenberger. Michael Schellenberger, thank you so much for your time. We've had environmental authorities, particularly in the US, say, well, no, um, you know, wind towers, wind turbines at sea, they, they don't cause whale deaths. What evidence have you come across that they do? Well, thanks for having me. So, um, as in Australia and the United States, around the world, governments have been saying that there's no relationship between offshore industrial wind energy and the very significant increase in whale deaths. Our new documentary, which is called Thrown to the Wind, proves, showing very powerful science from in two ways, that in fact, um, offshore wind activity is causing the increase in whale deaths. The first way we do that is we show that the increase in boat traffic in areas that had been untrafficked until the wind industry started constructing offshore and exploring offshore, that that is directly correlated to wind deaths at that time. This is very powerful data. There's more data of this kind coming forward. It's all presented in the documentary thrown to the wind. We have a second major piece of information here, which is that when the documentary film crew went out on the boat with an underwater acoustic specialist, when he dropped his hydrophone, which is the underwater microphone in the water, they were shocked by how loud it was. The very high decibel sonar is far beyond what the government agencies allow. Those very high sounds, the whales want to escape those sounds Sometimes mothers and calves are separated and they have to go away from areas of richer feeding grounds to poor areas and they starve to death and die and wash up on shore. In other cases, the sound drives them into boat traffic where they're struck and killed. This information is so explosive, it proves that the governments have been lying. They've either not been doing the research they said they would do or if they have done the research, they've been covering it up. I'm already in conversations with members of Congress about holding hearings on this with investigative subpoena powers, because we are not gonna provide our underlying data with the government, because the government, or rather I should say with the regulatory bodies, because they've proven themselves untrustworthy, potentially corrupted. And so we're working with the legislative branch to do an investigation to get, to get to the bottom of this terrible scandal in which I should, I should I hasten to add, we're talking about extinction of the North Atlantic right whales, of which there's fewer than 340 individuals left. Extinction is forever. This is an absolute environmental catastrophe brought on by bad environmental policies. And Michael, when you say um, the, and, and I've got, we've just shown footage of the noise that you've detected, 
this is not just from the pile, is this from the pile driving and all that to actually construct the wind towers or is it from the operation of them once they are built? It's actually from neither, incredibly enough. The pile driving will come later and that will be potentially even louder than the initial sonar, which they're using to map the ocean floor to find the appropriate locations for these gigantic wind turbines which are the length of over three football fields, the turbine blades, thousand feet turbine blades. So, th so this disruption that we're seeing is simply trying to find where to place the turbines. It's not even with the construction of the turbines, nor with their operation. So this is really shocking. I mean, we can't lose a single additional female whale, or there is risk of, of species extinction for this species. This is, it's shocking. There's already, we shouldn't have had to do this. There were already scientists, the top American scientists in the, in the government agencies themselves, themselves had been warning of this repeatedly in open letters and it was, there was media publicity about it. It's all been ignored. The Biden administration has been forcing this project. There's a lot of sh really shameful behaviors uh, are behind this and we intend to get to the bottom of it and demand accountability and end to these projects which are killing whales directly. Now, you raise a really interesting point. You say corruption. I'm, I'm assuming what you mean in part here is that we have a global warming movement that seems almost totalitarian. You, you can't stand in its way. And it seems to me that if a, if a whale is in the way, if you're raising concerns about that or uh, what we see here, the destruction of, of bushland, uh, farmers uh, complaining about these huge transmission towers that are being built across their lands, it's all being pushed aside. People don't want to know about things like this. Yeah, you have it absolutely correct. I think the right word for it is monomaniacal. The idea that climate change is the only important environmental problem in the world, it's just not true. There's other more important environmental problems. Um, saving whales from extinction is definitely one of the most important priorities of the environmental movement. When I was a boy, save the whales was one of the first political slogans I was ever exposed to. In my very progressive uh, father's food co-op, there were Greenpeace posters Anybody that's ever had a chance to see a whale in the wild, it's a spectacular spiritual experience. And so in the name of a kind of religious zealotry that's overtaken the climate change movement, we're at risk of losing these spiritual creatures, which are ancient creatures, which are intelligent creatures, which care for their young with a tenderness that is only comparable to humans and primates and and an evolved species. So people have lost their minds when they think that generating electricity from gigantic wind turbines that are, that are going to make a whale species extinct, if they think that that's somehow healing of the earth, uh, it just shows how delusional people have become, how monomaniacal they've become. Michael, you just put, it's, it's almost comic how how strange this is. We'll destroy the planet in order to save it. Uh, Michael Schellenberger, thank you so much for your time.